Good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Monica Garrison. <laughs> uh, let me start by saying that I might be the least likely candidate to uh, run an organization advocating for women on bikes. But here's how I found my way to this place. So um, as a child, I rode my bike around my <laughs> East Pittsburgh neighborhood. <laughs> really? Um, uh, I rode my bike around my East Pittsburgh neighborhood. I climbed fruit trees. That was my summer of joy. Uh, my partner in crime was my brother. And uh, we could pretty much ride wherever he wanted to. We had a few boundaries set by mom, which were stay within five blocks and make it home before dark. Um, we customized our bikes. We made modifications. We had a great time. I could never keep up with my brother and his friends on their bikes, but nothing would stop me from trying. So I picked up cycling again in my early 20s. Um, I was single, living on my own. I had an apartment, a job in town. So I decided commuting to work would be a great way to relieve stress. And it was. Um, I find this hour of my day was my uh, moment of zen, I call it. And fast forward, though, to 2013, my life had changed significantly. Uh, I was now married. I had two teenage stepsons. I had two little children under the age of six. And if you don't know much about Pittsburgh, uh, what you should know is generally our winters are pretty <laughs> treacherous. Um, this year has been an exception, but this is a typical scene from Pittsburgh. Um, and I actually commuted by bus at this time in my life. Uh, and I spent an entire winter commuting uh, in the snow and the cold. Um, and it was, it was a little depressing. I packed on a few extra pounds. Um, and I thought the next logical step would be for me to maybe take up cycling again, because it brought me so much joy in my life, and, um, and see if it could get me out of this mental fog. So I uh, did, went to the internet to find what I needed to know about the best bike for me. I was confident that I knew what that bike was. So I went to the nearest bike shop and I walked in and I told them what I wanted. It was a little intimidating because the staff was completely male, um, but they were very attentive and they helped me tremendously and I left with the bike of my dreams. So as I rode, I was transported immediately back to that carefree time when I was a child, um, spending my summers on my bike. And my kids were coming along for the ride, and they enjoyed it. Um, they were looking forward to the times that we rode. And in all honesty, I was newly rejuvenated. I rode as much as I could, and I started to volunteer for Bike Pittsburgh events so that I could meet other cyclists in my area. But the more I rode, the more I realized something was missing. There weren't many women who looked like me who were also riding their bikes. And I wanted to share that joy. So I took to the internet and I created a Facebook page called Optimistically Black Girls Do Bike. <laughs> and uh, soon after, also a website by the same name. And the goal was just to create a, a safe, comfortable space uh, where women, but especially women of color, could discover their love of cycling or share their already existing love of cycling. And I wanted to let them know that they were not alone. But it became that and so much more than I ever could have imagined um, as I found that many women of color around this, the country felt the same way I felt. Um, they all wanted to share their joy of cycling with their friends and with their family and they noticed that they weren't sure where they fit in with the larger cycling community. So many of us rode bikes as children, but at some point we relegated cycling to something other people do or something only elite athletes do. I wanted to push for women to consider cycling as uh, something to put in their toolbox to help them live richer lives. So about three months into this process, I received a handwritten letter, which I didn't think people did that anymore, but it was a, a handwritten letter from a woman named Victoria. 
and she lived in Florida, which was very far away from me. But she shared that she loved the mission of Black Girls Do Bike, and she thought that she wanted to start a riding group in her town. And um, I was on board. Uh, more importantly, she was a mother, just like me, so that, uh, that touched me a lot. Victoria I had recently taken up cycling as well, and she was using it to recover from her recent uh, bout of heart failure. So we had a slow start there. I think on average, she maybe had one to two, maybe three ladies at a time. So we duplicated this uh, several times over, and we now have close to 70 Black Girls Do Bike Riding chapters across the country. <laughs> Thank you. And in our network, we have 90 lady leaders. We call them affectionately Sheroes um, because they truly are. They are the backbone of this movement. Um, and we have close to, if not just about over 13,000 total members who are supporting our organization. And women are just dusting off old bikes, purchasing new bikes. They're accomplishing goals they never thought that they could accomplish. And uh, to be completely honest, they are inspiring me more than I could ever inspire them. So last June, we organized our first national meetup, which uh, had ladies come from over 10 states to the Atlanta Cure de, Tour de Cure, excuse me, and we raised several thousand dollars for diabetes research. Um, and that was probably the greatest experience I've had in a room full of, of women just encouraging and, and uh, completely supporting one another. And that's the picture that we took uh, at the event. And Victoria, the great news is her chapter in Central Florida has grown from just about three members to close to 200 members. And I will have the pleasure of meeting Victoria in April as she flies to Pittsburgh to be the keynote speaker for our women and biking forum. Um, so I'm ecstatic about that. And the best news is I see no, no signs of this slowing down. Thank you.